Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice Diophantine equation. An equation with integer solutions. Positive and negative. So I'm going to go ahead and walk you through the solution. And then I'll show you the results from, from alpha. And we'll go, we're going to be looking at a graph at the end. So let's get started. Now, when you have a problem that you have to solve for integers, one of the things that you're looking for is a way to factor this expression. So to make this expression factorable, x squared plus 18x plus 12 is not factorable as is, right? So we're going to go ahead and complete the square. So write the left hand side as a perfect square plus minus something. And we can do it by looking at the coefficient of x. Remember, to complete the square, we do need half of the coefficient of x squared. So half of 18 is 2, and if you square that, you get 9 squared, which is 81. So we do need an 81. To get that, here's what we're going to do. We're going to add 81 minus 12, which is 69. So this makes 81. But we can't just add 69 to both sides. We have to also subtract it. So now it's equivalent to adding 0 to both sides. Actually, not 0 to both sides. It's just adding 0 to left-hand side. But you can also add a 0 here if you want. doesn't matter. Great. So now we can go ahead and take this. We can go ahead and take this expression, this part, and write it as x squared plus 18x plus 81 minus 69 equals y squared. Now inside the parentheses we have a perfect squared, that's perfect. So let's write it as x plus 9, I don't know why this is disappearing, okay. x plus 9 squared minus 69 equals y squared. Now 69 is not a perfect square, but y squared is. So let's go ahead and switch sides here. 69 and y squared can be switched because 69 is being subtracted. So we can make it a difference of two squares. Just like this. All right, great. Now it's factorable by difference of two squares. If you ask me what, what is one of the most important formulas or identities in math, I would say difference of two squares. The other one is probably the Pythagorean theorem. Anyways, let's go ahead and factor this. This can be written as x plus 9 plus y times x plus 9 minus y equals 69. Awesome. Now, we can go ahead and look at factors of 69. 69 is not prime, even though it's somewhat prime looking. Notice that 6 and 9 are both divisible by 3, which means the sum of the digits of 69, which is 15, by the way, is a multiple of 3, which means 69 is a multiple of 3. And it's, in fact, 3 times 23, which is kind of interesting because 69 can be written as the product of two primes. That tells you that it has four positive divisors. Great. Okay, great. Let's go ahead and take a look at each case, and now we're going to be finding the x and y values from here. But early on, we can safely say that there's going to be eight solutions, because if you consider the negatives, they're going, to, they're going to give you eight solutions. But let's go ahead and walk through each solution, and then we're going to look at the results from Wolfram Alpha. Let's see if Wolfram Alpha can find all the solutions, and then we'll look at a graph real quick. Okay, now, these are some... Not some, but all the cases, pretty much. We can basically set this equal to 69 and set this equal to 1. Now, what does that entail? Well, if you set this equal to 69, that basically means that you're basically writing it as x plus y is 60 and x minus y is negative 8. So you get a system of equations, right? And then you can easily solve it just by adding these two equations side by side, and then you're going to um, get 2x, which you can divide by 2, and you're going to get the x value. So from here we get 2x equals 52, and x equals 26. But if you plug in 26, that gives you y equals 34. So we basically get an ordered pair from here, which we can write as 26, 34. 
So that's an easy system to solve because it's linear and you can just go ahead and apply it to all the different cases. But to keep a long story short, I'm not going to do all the system solving here because that's going to take a long time and you can do it. It's going to be good practice. Uh, I'll just give you the ordered pairs based upon what we get from factors. Okay, anyways, let's go ahead and clear this up. And now we're going to write each possibility and look at the corresponding ordered pair. So 69 times 1 is 1. And then we can write 23 times 3. And I want to go systematically while decreasing the first factor uh, and increasing the second factor. So this is going to give us 4, 10. And then I have 3 and 23. Obviously, this can be switched. And something interesting happens when you switch this. You're going to get the ordered pair 10, 4. Actually, not 10, 4. It is going to be the 4, 10. Negative 10. Okay, so here's what happens. Let me tell you what is going on. I know most of you thought about this. Since y is squared, if y equals y sub 0 is a solution, negative y sub 0 is also a solution because when it's squared, it's going to give you the same result. So y is going to come with two signs, plus minus. Make sense? Okay, great. But x values are going to be pretty much fixed. So the next one, it's not too hard to guess. If you go with 1 and 69, this should give you the pretty much the same thing as, as the first one, except y is going to be negated. Make sense? Okay. So those are the first four. And then now we can look at the negative factors, like negative 69 and negative 1. And then this is going to give us, this is going to give us negative 44 and negative 34. Both of them are going to be negative in this case. And then we have the negative 23 and negative 3. This is going to give us negative 22 and negative 10. And then we have negative 3 and negative 23. Obviously, not too hard to guess, right? Same thing pretty much. Y value will be negated. And finally, we have the negative 1 and negative 69, which is going to be negation of Y on this ordered pair, negative 44, comma, positive 34. So both X and Y are negative for two cases, and then they're just going to switch around differently. Okay, so these are going to be all the solutions. Hopefully, you can see them all together like this, right? And then we're going to just go ahead and look at what Wolfram, Wolfram Alpha <laughs> gave us, and then we'll compare if you can get eight results from there too, all right? And then we'll look at the graph, and we'll finish up real quick. All righty. So here's the result from Wolfram Alpha. If you enter this, you know, it's great. It's a really great tool. And you can basically go to wolframalpha.com and enter the same equation. And as you can see here, we get eight solution with the plus minuses. Awesome. Good job, Wolfram Alpha. Let's go ahead and take a look at the graph. This is the graph of a hyperbola. Why is it a hyperbola? You can find out if you... Do a little bit of manipulation. You can write it as a hyperbola. I just wanted to show you one of the solutions. All of them would be too crowded. And also I had to uh, zoom out a little bit. So I didn't want to do it. But anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe. Not tomorrow. Come on. I'll see you soon in an hour with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.